So I'm going to take here a couple of important types of functions as additively separable and multiplicatively separable functions. Additively separable functions are just do functions of two variables. You can generalize the idea to more than two. A function of two variables, it's a function, it, it's something which is a function of one variable plus a function of the other variable. And, and I'm just going to assume that these little f and little g are actually differentiable. It, it's not really, I mean, you could have a additive separate the pieces aren't, but just to make it easy, I'm going to assume that little f and little g are differentiable, twice differentiable, whatever you mean. Okay, so I'm just going to try to compute the partial derivatives. So what is f sub x of x comma y? What is the partial derivative of the of this function with respect to x? What's that the would just be the, the derivative of f x with respect to So that's just f prime of x mm -hmm. prime here, plus derivative of g y with respect to x is 0. f sub y of x y? g prime y. I'm just writing it below the thing so you can see. Okay. Now, the, 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 so, so this is a situation, this is a, actually the only type of situation where your partial derivative with respect to one variable, at least a function of two variables, is the only situation partial derivative with respect to one variable doesn't depend on the other variable at all. The reason is because it's of this form. If it weren't of this form, your f sub x, capital F sub x, would involve both x and y. But it doesn't, just involves x, and that's because the function is of this form. Capital F sub y of x comma y is just, involves y. Same reason. Now, what is going to be the so the notation for the second order partial? What is the second order partial going to be? Uh, double prime. Little f double prime. Right? So you, it's it's just. So what this means is this is just a derivative of f with respect to x then take a partial derivative of that function again with respect to x. So it's the partial derivative of this, this thing here with respect to x again. What is f sub y y of x comma y? g double prime, g prime. Double prime of y. Okay, now there's a little uh, tricky notation. Well, this is a partial derivative notation, mixed partial, second order mixed partial. What is the derivative of capital F with respect to little x and then differentiate that after that if you with respect to y. So you differentiate this with respect to zero. y. Zero. And what is capital F of y x x comma y? So you differentiate this thing with respect to x. Again zero. Again zero. So good. So actually there's a general theorem which tells you that under most circumstances these these two things will be equal, even if it's not additively separable. The general result, Clairaut's theorem, which tells you that, that these two, these two expressions will usually be equal. There's some, some, some conditions. It doesn't matter whether they are separable or not. Yeah, I mean, the fact that these two are equal doesn't, but the fact that they are zero is basically because of separability. Obviously. That's actually a pretty deep result. Uh, and it requires some, some continuity assumptions. But, but we're not talking about that right now. We just, you know, to what the partial. In general, if you have, take some higher order partial, if it just involves x's, then it'll just be the corresponding partial of little f at x. If it just involves y, it'll be the corresponding, sorry, corresponding ordinary derivative of g with respect to g at y that many times, right? If it involves a mix of x's and y's, then what will the mixed partial be? Zero. Zero. So if you have f sub x, x, y, that's going to be zero. So f, x, y, x, that's going to be zero. And any, any higher order mixed partial is going to be zero. The pure ones will be, will, will be the corresponding things. And let's take, take, uh, multiplicatively separate. So, I use capital G just because I use capital F, I right? could have used the same letter, but then it will confuse you. So you have it's a function which, is, which can be written as a product of a function of x and a function of y. Okay, so now we have to be a little careful, right? So we just need to understand how to differentiate this with respect to x. What would you get? Um, gy by f prime x. Yeah, so I'll just write it in the same order. f prime x 
在洗碗。What is going to be g sub y of x comma y? Uh, f x g prime y. Okay, now I'll skip a little more. Suppose I take g x x a certain number of times, and y. So let's say x occurs. K time, or uh, maybe like m times, and y occurs n times. Okay, so it's a it's a it's a higher order mixed partial. What's this going to be? Uh, first, m times x that will be x m super m x by g y, mm -hmm. and then we we'll take another. Yeah. N times y, that will be, oh, then the f and y will become the coefficient, and then g. And you're mixing up your x and y, but yeah, you got that. Yeah, g and y. Oh, the result is very neat. Okay. So, so if you have a multiplicatively separable function, it's really easy to calculate high derivatives. It's, it's just the corresponding, uh, the, and, and actually because of this result called Clairaut's theorem, or actually you don't even need the full strength of the result, but basically, that tells you that actually it doesn't matter what order the x's and y's are written in, in these cases. So actually, if I ask you what is, so, so basically, if you have, if, even if the x's and y's are not written in this order, you have some x's, some y mixed order, if the x, if there are m x's, there are m x's, and there are n y's, it's going to be like this. Okay? And so, so, so what's important, the additively separable, is the case where there's no interaction between the variables. There's no interaction term. And that's why the mixed partial is zero. What does the second order mixed partial capture? Captures the interaction between the terms, right? Uh -huh. So in this case, it's zero because the terms don't interact. Okay. Right? Uh, but the first order is already, it doesn't have y in it. Yeah, and that's, that's sort of the reason why the second one is zero. That's like, that's another way of seeing the second one is zero. But, but what I'm saying, the interaction between the terms in the original thing, before you differentiate, doesn't okay. exist. There's no interaction between the terms mm -hmm. in the original thing. And that's why you are, that's why this, the mixed partial is zero, right? Mm -hmm. It's like saying that each one's doing its own thing independently. Whereas multiplication separable is sort of, of a sort of, it's, I won't say it's quite the opposite, but, the, but here, the only thing is, is interaction, right? There's no, I mean, it's, there's not a very precise thing, but, but it's, it's basically pretty close to being, uh, uh, sort of everything's interacting. And by the way, so what is the mixed partial? I guess I didn't write explicitly, but what is g of xy? I mean, I wrote the very general one. Maybe you should write this one. Of f prime x, g prime y. I mean, this is a special case of that. Okay, so so the multiplicative separable and added, these are these are pretty important cases, uh, and and you can you can in fact think about the general case as a sort of a rather you can whenever you see a general result about about uh, functions two variables you always think about these two cases and that most functions are not as simple as either of these but think of these two cases and see how it generalizes from these outward. Uh, you can also do the same thing functions of more than two variables and the same principles will hold. Okay, maybe we'll talk about that in the next video.